Watching an episode of The Pat McAfee Show is like attending Mass at Sports Church. Since its inception in 2015 as a YouTube livecast on Barstool Sports and continuing through its move to ESPN, the show has been broadcast from an enormous studio-slash-home gymnasium dubbed the Thunderdome on McAfee's property outside Indianapolis, the city where he spent eight seasons with the Colts as a punter. His guests all appear to be cast in his image, jocular white dudes with beards, only paler and softer of flesh. They're not athletes. They're not journalists. They're not even particularly good on TV. And yet they're on ESPN for 15 hours a week because they're friends with McAfee. Right. Do you think the author resents this? They're not journalists, guys. They're not even athletes. When he really gets rolling, his flock will join in with some call and response. But instead of crying out, I mean, as opposed to how, how the, the valuable insights of professional sports journalists who are about the most left wing of all the different uh, journalistic beats. I mean, sports journalists who stare in the face the obvious fact of nature that different groups have different gifts, but uh, are just so you know overwhelmingly left wing and so dedicated to denying basic facts of life. So the, Pat McAfee got in trouble this week because he was praising Caitlin Clark, the new WNBA player, the rare white heterosexual star of the WNBA, and he praised her as a tough bitch or a new bitch or white, as a white bitch. And he meant it as a compliment, but he got so much criticism for using the term bitch that he, he backed down and apologized. So the author of this Atlantic piece you know, practices, lives by, and venerates courtier morality where you're constantly adapting what you say to changing norms. And like a courtier, like in a king's court, you are constantly aware of you know, how every word, every gesture might be interpreted by different members of the court. And it's this liberal enlightenment, you know, buffered identity, where people are expected to develop meaning and purpose and morality through deploying their own powers of reason and that we can elevate ourselves to ever you know, more ethereal, you know, out, of, out of body, you know, away from those icky traditional ties of blood and soil and uh, outmoded you know, traditional mores and religion. We're supposed to you know, become you know, highly rational uh, courtier beings who are constantly adjusting what we say to changing mores so that we don't oppress anyone through words, right? Silence is violence. Out amen or praise Jesus. They belch out aloud, wad, roughly translated, it means, damn right. By the time McAfee retired unexpectedly from football at age 29 to concentrate full-time on the Pat McAfee show, he'd made 50... So journalists really hate how much success former athletes have in the, the, the sports media industry. All right? And a lot of this comes from they want to preserve their own status. All right? they, they don't want interlopers. And just like virologists don't like the COVID leak uh, hypothesis because it reflects terribly on their profession and it would have devastating consequences for their profession. It would make them look terrible, right? If, if there's a 50% chance that COVID developed as the result of a lab leak, then virologists as a profession have been incredibly careless. They've given us a worldwide pandemic that's killed over 20 million people and they all essentially closed ranks to protect their profession and to try to minimize the, the chances that COVID was created by a lab leak. And so it would just become startlingly obvious that this profession does not act in the public interest. Instead, they act in their own interest. They want to do ever more exciting experiments. They want ever more funding, ever more prestige. They don't want to be burdened down by regulation by people who are outside their profession. And so they've got these strong personal professional status reasons for denying the lab leak. And I'm not taking a side here, right? I'm not siding with the lab leak. I find it fascinating that, that the experts overwhelmingly say natural origin. And on the other hand, the news media and, of course, the distance sphere says, no, it's not natural origin. It's most likely the lab leak. Do you see the correlations here between the profession of journalism and the profession of virologists, they both want to maintain their privileges, right? They, they both believe in protocols and they resent outsiders who don't follow their protocols and who don't bow down to the path that they have trod, right? W whether as journalists or as virologists, they 
They loathe the interlopers on their turf. They want to preserve their own special status, power, money, and enhance it. And they look out with contempt at, at people who are supplying you know, very different answers from what the professionals say. His mind to walk away from a job that paid him a fortune to kick a ball five or six times a game. In the NFL, though, kickers are marginal figures who get the spotlight only when they screw up. On the Pat McAfee show, he's the Pope. He often describes himself as a dumb punter and his buddies on the show as a collection of stooges. But he's far more shrewd than he lets on. And he proved it when he accepted ESPN's offer. No relationship, though, better crystallizes the growing enmity between McAfee and ESPN's news division than his continued indulgence of his good friend, the New York Jets quarterback, defiant anti-vaxxer, ayahuasca enthusiast, and for a brief moment. So it's kind of interesting that now that the dominant journalistic position is that you should not interview or do anything to platform anti-vaxxers. You should only present them after you've edited down your interview and, and shown them in a terrible light. So it used to be in the 1960s, reporters were bringing in new voices to the conversation. But now, since the 1990s, all right, it seems like uh, reporters and the most you know, powerful players in the mainstream media want to reduce the number of voices. Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s rumored running mate, Aaron Rodgers. On October 23, 2023, during one of his weekly appearances on the Pat McAfee show, Rodgers took a veiled shot at Travis Kelsey, referring to Kelsey as Mr. Pfizer, for his participation in an awareness campaign urging people to get vaccinated against COVID. McAfee made sure to note on air that he was vaccinated, an implicit rejection of Rodgers' position, but he didn't challenge his friend about it, and he expressed surprise afterward that anyone expected him to. Yeah, I, I get that from journalists all the time. They have so co much contempt for me that I didn't, quote, challenge, you know, many of my more dissident guests. But I got better content from them. I got, you know, a better conversation from them because I wasn't imposing my moral judgment. So journalists often venerate challenging guests and it makes them look tough to their peers, but they do it in a way that usually invokes moral judgments or other judgments that shuts down their guests and puts people in a defensive crouch and that limits the things that they'll say. So a, a more easygoing approach without the judgment tends to you know, elicit uh, far better interviews. I remember and, and this was a journalist who was essentially a, a, a member of Antifa, but uh, also working as a journalist. Right, Many journalists are effectively members of Antifa. Their real agenda is you know, their left-wing activism. And, and because... You know, I didn't confront, I didn't pronounce enough moral judgments in my interviews with people, right? Judgments that would shut people down and completely, you know, spoil an interview or if not completely end it. Then on January 2nd, 2024, Rogers shared on McAfee's show a slanderous rumor about the late night host Jimmy Kimmel and Jeffrey Epstein that does... So this late night host is, is a degenerate. So I, I'm not sure that he did anything that uh, Aaron Rodgers... Uh, might have said on the Pat McAfee show, but it's not like this uh, late night host was sterling uh, paragon of moral virtue. Kimmel's show airs on ABC, which, like ESPN, is owned by Disney, meaning that McAfee had let his buddy use his platform to smear a co-worker. Kimmel responded angrily on X, calling Rogers a soft-brained wacko and threatening to sue. This time, even McAfee seemed to know that Rogers had gone Okay, Elliot Blatt, that was very funny. The vax works, bro. It doesn't prevent COVID, but it does prevent you from being caught an anti-vaxxer. Too far. Later that day, he met with the only two people at Disney he recognizes as authority figures, Jimmy Pitaro and Bob Iger, then expressed contrition during his broadcast the next day. He I mean, how chat is that? I mean, this guy earns the contempt of this journalist because he's not overly solicitous of his bosses. Right? This guy got one of his bosses fired. He only recognizes essentially two bosses at ESPN. Uh, everyone, all the other people in authority, he doesn't bow down to them. And this journalist resents that. Chalked it up to shit talk gone awry and added, we apologize for being part of it. Once again, there was no evident discipline for McAfee. Look, there are different types of conversations and you don't take the statements and jokes made in, you know, a joshing locker room conversation the same way you would somebody accepting a Nobel Prize, right? 
Donald Trump's remarks about grabbing them by the pussy were not generic remarks about the way he operated towards women. He was talking in a locker room atmosphere with another man about how he makes the move on women who already want to sleep with him. And he just, you know, accelerates that. And a week later, Rodgers was right back on the show for his regular appearance, during which the quarterback notably did not apologize to Kimmel. The next day, McAfee announced that Rodgers would not return to the program for the remainder of the NFL season, but no one seriously doubts that he'll be back before the fall. Two months later, CNN reported that Rodgers had, in private conversations, expressed suspicions that the massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School was a government inside job. After Rogers tweeted a denial, I am not and have never been of the opinion that the events did not take place, McAfee read it aloud on his show. I'm happy to hear that, McAfee said. That is good news. Anyone expecting Mac? So I remember when my father started his regular radio show. So it was 1980. He'd been removed from the Seventh-day Adventist Church ministry, and he'd come out to Auburn, California, and there was fundings. He set up a nonprofit evangelical Christian foundation that's still going called Good News Unlimited. And the organization, you know, bought him time on various radio stations. And my father, in his first, first few talks, he was doing them off of notes instead of reading his, his talk. And so there's a price to be paid when you operate from notes as opposed to just reading, right? So the edgy of the conversation, all right, the more free the conversation, all right, the more ribald the conversation, right, the more joshing, the more locker room atmosphere to the conversation, right, the more likely you are to say something inappropriate. But the primary purpose of a TV show or a podcast or a live stream like this is not to avoid saying something inappropriate, right, the primary purpose is to provide merit, something of merit, whether that merit is humor or entertainment or information right? Merit is the goal for, for this stream and for Pat McAfee's show. And merit can just be fun and entertaining. entertaining. That, that's meritorious to give people something that makes them feel good. And so a, a more free conversation will come at a cost as opposed to a more stilted conversation, right? A, a conversation that strictly follows journalistic protocol. There's a cost to that too, right? It will be incredibly constipated compared to a free-flowing conversation. So it's not as though you can just choose one type of conversational style, one type of approach to a live stream, one type of approach to a radio show, and, and that's just the best approach, and there are no downsides to it, right? There's a downside to have a free, open conversation, and there's a downside to having strictly monitored, only journalistic protocol conversation, right? You can listen to NPR if you don't like Pat McAfee. McAfee to denounce his friend should have known better by then. I've never listened to Pat McAfee. I've never had any interest in listening to Pat McAfee. He seems to produce the kind of low uh, IQ shows that uh, don't interest.